Today, we dissect a standard wall light switch that has quit working. In order to gain an understanding of why it quit working and what we can do to avoid the problem in the future. Ever wanted to know what's inside those switches we all touch many times each day? Well, today we find out on the Home Tip Show. Let's get going. So about three weeks ago, our exterior ring cameras quit working. And my first thought was that we had popped a ground fault interrupter or GFI outlet somewhere in the house. So I immediately went on the prowl looking for which one needed to be reset. Uh, after finding no GFI outlets or breakers that needed to be reset, I suspected the GFI outlet that controlled that circuit and went bad. <laughs> Nara, do we have to play Baby Shark right now? I guess we do. Anyway, <laughs> I suspected that a GFI outlet that controlled uh, one of those, uh, that controlled those circuits and went bad. So I replaced it, and that was one um, in the garage. Upon replacing it, however, it still didn't work. So yeah, at this point, it was time to get out the ladder and figure out why this ring camera wasn't working. Um, I climbed up to the ring camera, took it down, uh, used a voltmeter on the feed wires, and determined that you know reg regardless of the location of the switch position on or off there was no power to the ring cameras so after being stumped and thinking about it for a day or so i decided the problem may be with the switch or wiring inside the switch box or the outlet box so I turned off the breaker and um, so, you know, I pulled out um, the, uh, the switch out away from the other switches and did some testing with an ohm meter and I was able to quickly determine that the switch um, was permanently in the off position regardless of it being turned on or off. What was showing here was a constant open. It should be closed when it's on, meaning that there's a connection from, from this point to this point. And when it's off, this should be open. So no connection from this point to this point. But what, what the ohm meter was showing me is that I had um, um, uh, complete resistance either direction. So I knew I had, I had narrowed it down now to this switch. So I, I put in a new switch um, uh, that, I, that I purchased up here on the corner from a local electrical dealer uh, called Consolidated Electrical Distributors, or CED. They're located on the corner of 70 and Sharon Road in Durham. And after replacing it, everything worked fine again. No concerns at all. Um, but, you know, it stumped me. Why was this particular switch causing me problems? And, um, you know, it's like a couple questions I had in my mind. What causes a 14-year-old electrical switch, which is barely used because it, it's always in the on position so that the ring cameras are working to suddenly quit working to why why was there no warning no sparking no smoking um, or anything uh, from the switch um, you know why did the switch feel completely normal right it, it feels like it should be working properly so over the the springs and things are all in the, in the right position and and working inside the resistance is fine and why were the other two switches in the box not having any problems? So I took a closer look at the switch and found something interesting. Now, this is a standard, uh, it's PS, it stands for uh, Pass and Seymour. This is a standard 15 amp, uh, 110 breaker, or up not breaker, a switch. And um, this house probably has, you know, who knows, 50 or 60 of them throughout the house. Um, so there were, there's literally, literally millions of these installed around the United States and around the world. Um, so, you know, this, this didn't appear to be some knockoff from a foreign country um, or, you know, I don't know. It just seemed like a regular switch. But when I turned it over and took a look, you could see there is clearly a large crack that, that starts up here kind of behind the uh, the ground comes down and around here 
Now I'm thinking to myself, what, what can cause a crack like that? Of course, somebody, somebody hitting it really hard uh, when they turn it on or off might be able to do that. Um, but, but it could also be something as simple as, you know, maybe this was just a bad run of switches um, and that are gonna that are gonna crack like that, or potentially maybe the plastic that they used. Um, you know, it was a bad run of the plastic, or this is just an inferior plastic product. So what we're gonna do today is we are gonna take a closer look. We're gonna dissect this switch and see if we can figure out what exactly happened. Now, rather than just sticking a screwdriver in here and breaking it, I'm going to try to drill out the rivets on the front, and we'll go from there. Hopefully it won't pop apart into a hundred pieces and then I'll be unable to figure out what happened. This rivet's a made from, looks like it's made from a different metal, so it might be a little bit more difficult to remove. just spinning a river rivet we're not really drilling it so all right I think we got it apart that time let's uh let's take a look here and, and see what we have all right so we have off the metal Little front plate. Now this is where things may pop apart. I'm not quite sure what's in there, but we have off the plastic front piece. And now let me do. Let me take a look. So what? How does this work? It's like that spring there. Controls. Okay. So something has to happen to connect this to this. So you can see it's solid, uh, um, I don't know, copper or brass as it comes in. And then looks like there's another solid piece here so the connection between the two is happening is happening in here so I'm like, let me see if I can use a screwdriver the connection between the two happens in this little gap right here there is something in there oh, let's spring out that must be the spring that applies pressure um, anytime you move the switch from one direction to the other this that spring applies applies pressure. Um, I don't see anything that is broken on the um, on the plastic switch itself. I might have to take a closer look at it, but it appears everything is normal. But let's look um, here. So there is some type of conductive material. I'm not sure exactly what it is, um, but something that's that's more conductive. That they solder on there. I do see a, what appears to be a little arcing and a little carbon build up there, but that shouldn't have been enough to keep this from working. So let's put this back in here and see if we can't look at it from a, from maybe a, a different a different perspective. And what could have went wrong here? Okay. 
So, turning it over and looking at the back side, um, we can see that, that the crack isn't nearly as visible now. Um, you know, under pressure with the front on and with the spring in, the crack is definitely, it's more like that. Uh, but without that, that in there, it's together. So I guess one possibility is that this, this switch could have had a factory crack in it, uh, been dropped or something, and just um, over the years, you know, the crack continued to travel down until it got to the point that, that um, I fell out, uh, that it just, you know, was unable when the switch was thrown, was unable to put enough a force against the to the contacts put in a force together that they actually made contact and that's kind of the way i'm leaning right now i don't see anything wrong with the switch electrically um like from a connect connectivity standpoint um it could have just been that that when when this gets turned and puts pressure against the back plate this one side separated enough um um in the on position that they never really made contact like they were supposed to because you can see it doesn't it doesn't take much for that to you know for that to be not not in contact with it I can feel it's in contact with it there but all it would take would be a little pressure with that particular with that kind of break it would just take a little bit of pressure and and those would not be able to make contact. So, I mean, switches are very, very simple devices. Let's take it apart and we'll take a closer look. Maybe we can get this out of there. I'm not sure if we can. Well, it still has that piece of copper in it. Yeah. Okay. So, here you can see um, how they how they go together like this and it's just when the switch is off they're separated when the switch is on they're together so I can see how whenever they were supposed to go together um, it could have just been enough pressure against the plastic holding this part that they just weren't able to get there I think we found our problem. Uh, it's some sort of plastic fatigue uh, on the on the back cover. It has nothing to do with the fact that they use the um, the the push-in. These are where the push-in wires. That one I just took out of there. Those are those are the I, I call it the lazy way of putting a socket in. Um, you just strip it back and push it right in there, and it's the same as electrically screwing it um, around the post. Uh, I don't ever use these unless I, unless I'm very tired or at the end of a you know a long run. Uh, I know I built one house where I ended up using them because I just you know it. You can install the outlet in half the time when you use the push-ins, but I don't feel that they're as electrically stable as um, a uh, um, as a wire that's wrapped around a screw and tightened down. But I think we found our problem here. This, this simple little hairline crack along the back of the, the outlet, it, it's probably been there all along and just got worse with time. Um, or it could have been that that, that just is a, there's just a weak spot in their design. Um, it may have been dropped at one point when somebody was had put it in and it had a little nick there. And then over time, it just continued to, you know, continue to crack on down. Let's see if we can go ahead and just, just see how much force it takes just to break it. Oh, no force at all. So that is a very, very weak, cheap plastic. I mean, that took, I'm surprised, that took no force at all to just finish breaking. But all that was left holding it was this little, this little bit right here. So there we go. I think we've uh, we've diagnosed our problem down to it being plastic fatigue from either having them installing a dropped 
uh, a drop switch, which, you know, a factory defective switch with a little, um, little chink in it somewhere that, uh, um, or a little, you know, crack in it maybe that started up here on this corner. That corner does look like it could cause a potential, you know, there might be a potential weak spot there. I'm not a, a plasticologist, <laughs> I'm sure there's a real name for that, <laughs> but um, you know, I don't have a degree in, in chemistry or plastics, but you can see there's in that corner is just a small little bit of uh, plastic holding these two sides together. So it could have been just a little bit of a chink in that plastic um, or, you know, could have been hit real hard, maybe potentially from the front, but I don't think so. Um, that switch is never used. It has to stay on all the time because it's the power to the ring cameras outside for the security system. And so when that camera is off, we get an alert on our phone saying, hey, the backyard, backyard camera is off, you know, see what's going on. And um, so that switch is never off. So I think this is just something that happened over time um, and uh, may have been something that occurred at the factory or may have occurred during installation when the switch was installed. So the lesson learned here, if you're dealing with uh, passing Seymour or Legrand um, uh, switches, don't drop them. If you drop one, take a very close look at it. Make sure that there are, are um, no uh, cracks anywhere, even hairline cracks, because it will eventually fail and create the same problem that we have, or we had. Troubleshooting this took me, um, oh, I think if you added it all up, four hours. So, you know, at a, at a labor rate of an electrician, you know, you're looking at a few hundred dollars to get this fixed, um, if they were able to find it. So, there you go. I think we've we've solved the riddle of, uh, or the mystery. We've solved the mystery of what happened to our 15 amp, 110 volt outlet that just suddenly, or a, a switch that just suddenly quit working.